All right, all right, good morning. It is Tuesday, it is 6.31. My name is Scott Redler. I'm the Chief Strategic Officer of T3Live.com. Welcome to the 6.30 Club, where I like to go over what I'm looking at for the day, where we can make some money, um, how we can situate for the week, some of the things that are coming out, the narrative, what the market's obsessing about, maybe what the keys of the day are, what earnings we're looking at. Every week's been different. The market hit new all-time high. <laughs> Just like that. Leaders leading. SMCI up, uh, what, $52. Took out that full play takeout. You know, NVIDIA, another new high. And, you know, we're trying to keep moving our feet so we can make some money, net some money. It is January 30th, and I think everyone had a really good month. And if you did so in a strategic, methodical way, you deserve to get a nice paycheck. If you get paid quarterly, let it keep adding up. Alexa, lower. So uh, so here we are. Look at that. 49.29. A lot of people like Red Dog. You know, on the weekends, you post the candlestick cheat sheet and the chart pattern cheat sheet. And, um, you know, they make us money. Right? So many different chart patterns along the way. This one last one being a nice little, you know, bull flag breakout. So if you bought the S&P cash about 49.06, you had a nice trade. If you, um, you know, are looking at the spies, very similar, you know, it 489.12, two inside days, and then boom, took out 49 to 491.41, and uh, a lot of nice action in tech. We've been massaging swing trades, looking for new setups, using our tier system, you know, and just uh, getting up early and trying to make it happen. You know, you can't control... The condition is just your response to conditions in whatever it is in life, right? Alexa, lower. So, um, Alexa, lower. So, with that being said, um, by the way, uh, my uh, editor, Michael, is going to situate a new scenario where I believe there's a no, new platform where I'm going to be able to come on, see your comments. We can interact like we used to when, when Twitter was Twitter. <laughs> I'm not just a robot haven. No, I'm kidding. It's still, it's still kind of cool. It's good to have friends around the world. But, um, you know, just where I could, you know, do my 630 Club for 20 minutes, and it can go to YouTube, it can go to Instagram, it can go to Twitter, and, and it aggregates all the, the, the comments. So we could actually, so you could ask me questions, and I could, you know, hang out with my dogs, because that's what fun is, that's what, you know, we like to do around here, instead of me just talking to myself on this little web, webcam. Oh, you want some light? Oh, there's some light on the subject. Cheers. Anyway, so Q's um, did not lead yesterday, but not a big deal. You know, took out 426.21. Here's 429.89. Q's has been riding the eight-day moving average, right? Um, nice breakout here above 412. And, uh, you know, a little consolidation last week, and it seems like it's on its way again. Um, yesterday, where we made most of our money Sector-wise was the IWM. I even said to you guys in the in the in the 6:30 club yesterday, you had a pocket pivot here where they sold strength for five days in a row to throw everybody off. So maybe now we could buy some options for the Fed on Wednesday. And meanwhile, you know, we got paid early. We didn't have to wait till Wednesday. Today's Tuesday. Um, you know, IWM took out 197.99, took out 198.59, did 199.41. I bought the 198.50 calls. I, I don't even remember. I think a dollar forty, and they were almost three. So 100% on option play, just like that. Just looking at a good pattern, getting ready to go, and being pleasantly surprised. Actually, I, just, I took off a third, and then I took off another little bit just to, you know, take off half because you make 100% on an option play. You wanted that money. You know, who knows what will be by Wednesday. So anyway, um, nice trade. So we'll see what happens today. The IWMs. Down 27 cents, not a big deal. Maybe it goes from red to green and takes that 199.41 for an extra push. Some of the small cap names are acting better. Um, and then you have a lot of names on the move. Listen, guys, I was telling you, you know, there was a fight yesterday with SMCI. Finally, they came out. The, sh the shorts were trying to hold it in, and then it took out 496.78. And wow, look at that, five twenty, you know, 52 bucks. So the setup we talked about yesterday, where some of you guys took the 
520 by 550 is you got paid. And if you waited to take it after hours, you got paid. Um, I was a little lazy yesterday. I went with NVIDIA instead, which really isn't lazy. But now compared to SMCI, NVIDIA is lazy. If you look here at the Alpha team, you know, you will see. Um, yesterday, actually early, I put on another call spread. I did the 630 by 650s, and I'm also long some 630s. You know, so figured, hey, if uh, it takes out that bull flag kind of pattern, it can go. And then yesterday, you could have been a buyer of NVIDIA as it, uh, <clears throat> you know, which uh, we have. Yesterday was a good good hold yesterday for most of the day. When, when NVIDIA took out, uh, you know, this high, and I just felt as if, if SMCI goes up 50, NVIDIA is going to take out 628. Nice little 40 consolidation. Obviously, the real trade was when it took out 505, but now you have a continuation trade, two different types of trade. The bulky, juicy go after trade, and then the massage and buy a dip and play it through level trade. And that's really been working well. So for today, AMD is after the close. Alexa, off. Um, you know, it's had such a big move. This isn't as exciting. Like I, like I said yesterday, SMCI was like right here. You know, you had your move and you had a nice consolidation. So it was right in place. And obviously this play was even better. So I would say for AMD, you know, if you want to do something small, you could probably do the 185 by 200 call spread, where if, uh, you know, if they beat and they raise, which they probably will do, you know, a lot of the bears are talking about a hiccup in AI to start 2024. And obviously there's no hiccup in SMCI and there hasn't been a hiccup in NVIDIA, although this had a big move, it seems like that could be one more. So maybe you want to do a call spread. I'm going to stick with my options for NVIDIA. I'll trade around the stock. So this way, you know, today it trades, sell some of the free calls, and then uh, figure out, you know, how it looks to see whether you want to participate with NVIDIA. Because if AMD goes, it'll take NVIDIA with it. And if AMD all of a sudden isn't as great, maybe you could buy NVIDIA, you know, lower. So that's that's working there. Um, some of you guys made some really good money in Tesla yesterday. Finally, we talked about it could get above 186.78. That would trigger a potential upside move for those who are thinking could fill the gap above 193 to the 207-ish area. Tesla this morning is giving you guys some upside follow-through. Not so bad, up 4, 195.39. If you took it long when it cleared 186.78, make sure to trim some. Trim some into the 195 halves. Some people might say, hey, you know, I'm going to fade this because all it is is an oversold gap play. It's up to you. You'll do what you want to do. But all in all, calculate. Listen, nice little two-day move for cash flow. You know, if you took options into earnings, you're probably still in the water. If you, you know, said, hey, I'm going to go out longer term. It's so oversold. Well, congratulations. You have a small trade. Then you better book some. If you're trading the stock, see if it holds 193. There is a gap to fill all the way to 207. So there's room for Tesla if it wants to go, you know, a little bit higher. So let's talk about Microsoft having earnings after the close, still making its move. I do not own Microsoft. I own Microsoft, a lot of it, you know, in here. Remember, you guys were like after the NVIDIA trade, you're like, what's your biggest concentration? I'm like, it's Microsoft, and we did really well. Um, I actually was, you know, long it all the way up until uh, Friday. You know, I got out somewhere around 406, and uh, now Microsoft, Microsoft, <laughs> It's really just, you know, pushing the envelope. Now it's up another three. It's at 412 ahead of its earnings today. So this is really price for perfection. I don't think there's really much edge whatsoever. No real setup here taking it into, you know, the print. If anything, it, it could be a little vulnerable, you know, where it's a great report and they sell it because it's had such a move prior. I'm not shorting it and I'm not buying puts. I'm just not doing a call spread because, you know, I already made my money here. I think very similar to Google. Google was also one of our best swing trades over the last two weeks. Two different sets of options, stocks. Today, Google reports. You know, and Google has been trending up as well after a really nice move. If you remember, to start the year, I'm like, Google, in my, in my report, I'm like, it's probably going to make an all-time high. Um, and it happened in January, right? Here's your all-time high. Congratulations. Nice little trade above this uh, consolidation, and here you are. So both of these actively, to me, you know, it doesn't seem like there's great risk reward. If you're going to get paid in January, which is over soon, right? Um, you know, you don't, you know, you want to keep your money. So um, if anything, you know, do a small option trade um, if you feel like you need to be involved. But I feel like it already gave us the move. So there's no FOMO there for me. You know, AMD, 
I might do something to the clothes. I might just do a, a cute little 185 by 195. It'll probably cost me like two and a half to make seven and a half. You could do 20 of them, cost you five grand to make maybe, um, you know, 15, you know, or you could trade it thereafter, um, something like that. Um, and then later, obviously, uh, Thursday, Friday is Meta, um, Apple, and Amazon. <clears throat> Amazon's kind of trending along. Amazon, I still think, has room. Amazon, I'm going to have options into earnings um, for, for, for more catch up. Um, you know, uh, it's still not even near the, the 187 double top. It's not even this. this uh, I, I just feel like there's some room here. So I feel like, you know, it's just a better play. Usually you want to play with what's working, which is what we're doing also, but some for catch up. This Amazon seems like, you know, there's there's still a lot a lot of room there, you know. So I'm going with that. Apple is just kind of, you know, just not great. It's it's still, you know, there's still so much talk about handsets being lower and revenues not, you know, increasing, blah, blah, blah. P.S., you know, it made its new all-time high over the summer and it's been consolidating, consolidating. I, I also don't think this report's going to be enough. You know, just based on, I guess, the weakness in China. It's got a big market in China, plus you have Huawei making a move. And then, um, I don't know, but again, um, if I were, you know, which I am, <laughs> in the stock market, I have a process and a plan. I, someone's like, Red Dog, you know, gun to head. I hate the word gun to head. Like, do you think Apple could be 215 this year, meaning in 2024? I do. I just don't know if there's going to be enough in this report to to be a catalyst for a move above this 198, 199 to get there, or it's going to have to be sometime when the new iPhone comes out over the summer and they do whatever. But either way, if you're an investor in Apple, stay the course of your trader. You know, it hasn't been the it hasn't been the best focus, which it hasn't been. It's been just like a participation focus. We did have a great trade last week. You know, it was fast. It was furious. You had this double bottom here, and then I remember on that Bank of America upgrade. That's when um. Uh, you know, that's when I got involved and I did trim some into there. It's come in. If you want to do some lotto calls just in case, like, you know, the, the 202s are like a dollar, not even. So, you know, if you want to participate in risk something just to be involved. Anyway, um, the small caps, like I said before, participated. I did buy with Tesla getting a little bit better. I bought a little Rivian options. It's not a great trade. It's not a leader. I'm not over focused, but I figured, hey. Maybe this is a small bottom area. We bought the 17s for March. I went out a little bit just in case the small caps get better and the EVs act a little better. I figured, hey, maybe there's a little room to the upside. For those of you who are in SoFi from earnings, you know, you now have a pro earnings gap to trade against. This is 860. You could be long versus 860. Goes a little sideways, digest. Maybe it continues over 945. These type of pro earnings gaps aren't. It's similar to Netflix, but it's obviously a different stock. You know, Netflix, you had your pro earnings gap. A lot of you guys bought versus 537. Great setup. Took out the pro earnings high. And now here you are looking like it's going to continue. So this pro earnings gap setup for a continuation swing trade happens in any name. It just has to follow the rules. You know, last time it took a long time for Netflix to consolidate and go. This time it went pretty fast. So again, just showing you the difference, different stock, different sector. 860, what's SoFi doing today? It is down seven cents. So maybe, you know, you could, you could right. buy verse that spot, digest and goes. Um, yes, Rumble um, has been a great trade for us. I started buying it here in the 520 area. To me, it seems like there's room higher. A lot of people are going over to that platform. I even think T3 is looking at it. Institutional money's come in. Um, and, uh, you know, it's got some nice trading action. So as long as it's trading well, I'm going to continue to buy dips and it could work higher. Just one of the seven, eight, nine, ten positions that I'm trading. Um, as far as uh, Bitcoin, remember last week with the open house, I bought Bitcoin back. That was a great trade. Uh, I have very small left. I'm probably going to actively get rid of the rest of it today. As um, to me, it looks like it could take a little bit of a break. But all in all, you know, really nice trade for, for Bitcoin. Why did I buy Bitcoin again with you guys? Because, hey, red dog reversal right here. <laughs> 39.3 got reclaimed. That was my spot to buy the, the Bitcoin ETF through BlackRock. And now it's right back to where it broke down here. So this would probably be a better sell than buy. But nice move. Really nice move. Some of you guys made really good money with, um, you know, with, with coin or Mara, whatever the hell you guys are trading. For me, I just went with 
the Bitcoin ETF itself. Again, look at this. This is a red dog reversal sell at 47.9, pushed above, couldn't hold it. Hey, the opposite at the bottom. And then a nice move in the middle. And now right here, probably just needs a, a little bit of time. But momentum rules, you know, you can use it for any sector, any which way, um, as long as you follow them. And if you're very active, if you're not that active, then you do things different. Um, so anyway, so for today, you know, spies are down a little bit. Um, again, nice little bull flag breakout. I would think, uh, you know, maybe a little quiet today ahead of um, Microsoft and Google. Um, 489.12 is a nice pivot, went above it right now. Um, it's down 50 cents. So um, I'm short some 491 premium, long a little spies alongside. I've been trading it around that way. Um, and just, you know, listen, just keep making moves, keep moving around. There's a lot of action out there. A lot of people still like, oh, Red Dog, everyone said we're going to be in a recession. Or, hey, what about the hard land and the soft land and this or that? Listen, you know, if you come in every day and you have a go to list of 40 names and you move them up, move them up and down based on the setup, an A list, a B list, and a C list, and use the tier system, you could approach these things and you can make money, you can net money, and you could, you know, keep stops in as long as the trade stays the same. Right now, the sequence has been strong. Um, they say so goes January, so goes the year, which is kind of true. Um, so this could be a good year. Obviously, there might be some hiccups along the way, so you don't want to get over your skis. Someone asked me about my wife's blood in the street account. Um, she still has one tier working. You know, we bought that when the S&P was down 10% last year. So for her account, is at an all-time high. That's a long-term account. But a lot of you guys model some swing trades after her account, which I only buy when there's blood in the street. So, you know, my target for that account is 5100 you know, so... You know, if we get there in the first quarter or second quarter, I'll get back the cash. So that'll be, you know, fixed rider, just waiting for volatility at some point whenever it happens. And then other, you know, and then everything else is just monthly flows. S&P funds every month for my 401k, the 403b. My son's a freshman in high school, 529. We actually just made a, a very adult decision. He's not going to play club lacrosse this summer. Yes. Decided that he just wants to pivot to pure basketball. He wants to play in some basketball leagues and travel and play some big college basketball camps. He can't do that playing, you know, uh, summer lacrosse. So we went from being a two-sport athlete. He's going to try and focus on basketball, which, again, that's, you know, he wants to play it in college and you got to focus on it. Um, unfortunately, these days, it's just, you know, you can't be two, three-sport athletes. They play sports all year round. And it feels like, you know, you, you lose a step if you, if you don't, you know, keep up. But anyway, some of you guys were asking, he's having a great season. Thanks for, you know, watching and being interested. You know, if you're 30 years old or 35 and you have a son or a daughter or um, <laughs> any kind of child, you know, try and introduce stuff early. The earlier they do it, the better they get and the more confidence they get. And then, you know, kind of relates to everything, you know, um, and hard work, learning hard work early <laughs> is good. You know, there's not a lot of, the, of that out there, you know, discipline, hard work, teamwork, um, you know, not giving up, you know, dealing with some adversity, you know, dealing with the butterflies, you know, that all happens in business too down the road. So anyway, youth sports to me is a dress rehearsal for life. And um, not everyone's going to be a pro, but you don't have to. You learn a lot along the way. So uh, 650, January 30th, trim and trail. Congratulations if you caught SMCI or you played in a video or you're playing some of these tech names that we've been having some nice swing longs on. You know, not every stock has been created equal. Just uh, got to use the, the right criteria and go with what's working. You could test some things that you might think play catcher, but really go with the leaders. They're the ones who move the best and the fastest. Have a good day today, guys.